subjects can influence the subject's response, and so that can confound the study. That's why you need it to be double blind. Is that clear? Yes? Like with the placebo effect, can it also work like the other way? Like the doctor talks to you like um, you're kind of like they're going to give you the placebo, but they're actually giving you the real thing. Can that like you don't? Like if the doctor somehow implies to you that you're getting a placebo, yeah, but gives it away. The real thing. It will, because everyone's going to experience some placebo, placebo effect, probably. So that placebo part of it that you would have experienced, you're not going to. So that'll probably drop, drop the effectiveness a little bit. Wait, so how do you have this tester being blinded? The tester, like the doctor? Yeah. Um, so there's someone above the doctor who's supplying the pills, and they know what patient's going to what, and they send it to them. Yeah. Yeah, it would have, that's pretty much the only way. Okay, so we get double blind, why it's important. Alright. Response set, um, we talked about, right? The surveys. Yeah. Um, social desirability bias, that's also something with surveys where you answer a certain way because you think that's socially desirable, you think that's what people want to hear. Okay, so that's also a problem with surveys. Uh, we talked about ethics. Um, Okay, a little more on ethics. When is it okay to harm an animal? Never. No, no, it is okay. When, when, it benef when the benefits outweigh like the amount you're harming them. Obviously, it's subjective. But if you can find a cure for cancer by killing a few rats, you know, hey, okay? Um, again, you have to debrief, right? Um, what else? Oh, you can't, um, you have to like get... The subject has to give you um, consent in order to use them in the experiment in the first place, okay? Um, those are kind of the main ethics things that, like, uh, what's it called? Debriefing is a big one that you'll probably be tested on. Yes? Wait, so you can't do, like, a blind, like, experiment where they don't know they're being tested, and then you debrief them? Because wouldn't them knowing they're an experiment kind of mess it up a little bit? Um, if it is a true experiment, they're supposed to give consent. Like, if it's something like naturalistic observation that's not an experiment, um, or like, remember the one on the bystander effect? That yeah. wasn't really an experiment. Like, it was just, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, no one's placed in a control or experimental group. So, so no, if it's a true experiment, you need consent. Yeah. Any questions on that? Yeah, that's it for chapter two. Okay, it's still going? Okay, so we'll do chapter three. Do you guys need a break or do you want to continue? Continue. Continue? Okay. Okay. All right, bio. My favorite. Do you guys like the bio chapter? Not really. Okay. All right, so nervous system. You have the brain and spinal cord. What kind of nervous system is that? Central. Central. Everything else is? Yep. Okay, so let's talk about the central first. So in your central nervous system, you have little things that send messages. What are they called? Neurons. Neurons. Remember we built them? Okay. So um, go like this. <laughs> Okay, the message comes in through these branches. What are they called? Dendrites. Dendrites, right. Then it goes to a soma or cell body, which what? Decides whether or not to send the message, whether or not to fire. Then it goes through the axon, axon and the axon is surrounded by myelin sheath, which does what? Insulates and speeds up. Speeds up. You don't like the bio chapter. <laughs> I know. Okay, sends it through, and then it goes to the end. The terminal, terminal, terminal buttons, buttons that have little bubbles called synaptic vesicles, which hold the neurotransmitters. neurotransmitters. Okay, and then the neurotransmitters are the chemical messages that jump across the synapse, synapse and bind to the receptor sites of the next neuron, the postsynaptic neuron. Okay. Now, if your myelin sheath is deteriorated, multiple what do you multiple, multiple sclerosis? Okay, so the messages get slowed down or eventually not even sent, which leads to what? Paralysis. Paralysis. Okay, and eventually possibly even death. Now they have treatments. <laughs> Different people respond 
have so many different treatments, but it's not, you know, it's, it's a scary disease. Question? Okay. Um, all right, so let me draw a neuron.
it fits into your acetylcholine parking spot. So can acetylcholine then get into the parking spot? No, so then you're missing acetylcholine, which prevents you from moving, moving which results in paralysis, okay? Um, another thing is acetyl, low levels of acetylcholine are linked to Alzheimer's. So remember, A in Alzheimer's and A in acetylcholine. And it is a memory one, and Alzheimer's has to do with memory, okay? Botox works in a simil similar way as snake venom. Do you want me to, can I move on, or? Are you guys writing? Yeah. Move on? Yeah. All right, the next one is dopamine. This is a big one. Dopamine and, and drugs, right? Drugs like Coke raise your levels of dopamine. Dopamine is the feel-good neurotransmitter. Over time, if you keep raising your levels of dopamine, your body's going to think like, okay, you know, it doesn't need to make enough. So then if you try and get off the drugs, what's going to happen? Yeah, you're dependent for basically kind of like your happiness, right? So, um, so, so that's that. They've also found really high levels of dopamine linked to schizophrenia. So um, this is why schizophrenia can sometimes be drug induced. If you're doing like really like hardcore drugs and it's messing with your with your levels of dopamine, it could actually induce schizophrenia. Okay, so um, definitely not something to mess with. Low levels of dopamine have been found to be linked with um, also or not Alzheimer's. I'm sorry, Parkinson's. And Parkinson's, um, because this also has to do with voluntary movement, someone who, let's say, has Parkinson's who wants to grab, like, a cup or something, right? They might shake, okay? And that's because their dopamine levels are very, very low, and so it's impacting their voluntary movement. So they give them a drug called L-DOPA, which basically mimics dopamine or increases um, your dopamine levels, okay? And what do you call a drug that mimics and in increases the amount of the neurotransmitter? An agonist. So agonist versus antagonist. Antagonist, anti, right? Agonist is kind of like the protagonist of the story. Serotonin. So we talked about mood disorders, like um, depression is linked to serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, you guys get that. Um, OCD and eating disorders are also linked to serotonin. OCD, um, we'll learn later, a lot of it has to do with control, like you have um, thoughts that keep coming into your head, and then you do something to sort of take control and relieve your anxiety. Eating disorders also have to do with control. A lot of people who have eating disorders, they have issues where they're not in control of other things in their life, and that's like the one thing that they can control. And so, you know, they might purge or they might not eat, and we'll talk about that in um, chapter 15, but that's Another thing that's linked to control. So both related to serotonin. It's not surprising that these two are both related to the same neurotransmitter because of that. Um, also regulation of sleep and wakefulness, eating possibly aggression, but this is the main stuff you need to know for serotonin. Okay? Can I move on? Yeah? Adrian? Okay, norepinephrine, norepinephrine and epinephrine uh, are involved in fight or flight, okay? So fight or flight response, it's kind of easy to remember because fight and flight kind of sound similar and norepinephrine and epinephrine sound kind of similar. So it kind of goes together in my opinion. Um, fight or flight is part of the autonomic nervous system, remember, because it's automatic, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, also linked to depression, but more so serotonin, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, and I would, leave, I would leave it at that. When norepinephrine's up, your heart rate and your blood pressure is up. Remember that test question I gave you where they said that norepinephrine levels and dopamine levels were increased and you had to figure out um, what kind of drug it was and it was a stimulant? Remember that one? Mm -hmm. on, the, on the consciousness test. So you could see norepinephrine heart rate and blood pressure up. So with dopamine, you know, and all that stuff, you being like, like crazy, I can conquer the world, remember that one? It's stimulant, okay? All right, GABA, inhibitory, yo GABA GABA, you wanna inhibit that show because it causes you anxiety. So if you don't have enough GABA, you get anxiety, okay? So. GABA kind of like stops your anxiety, it inhibits it. So, um, I know, the yo 